We're going to start um, moving on to the ZBrush side um, for this workshop. We're doing two hours, two hours, two hours, two hours, two hours with Maya, two hours with ZBrush, two hours with Substance Painter, and then go back to Maya, do a little rigging, um, and maybe put it in Unity if we have time. Um, basically, just getting it ready uh, with the rigging and the animation and exporting that as a FBX and hopefully get into Unity. Uh, I'm more comfortable with um, Unreal, but anyways, we'll give it a shot to show how to import all those uh, materials into the material editor in Unity, which is pretty simple. All right, so what we're gonna do is uh, from our last tutorial, we finished up the fish and uh, if you saw the last steps, I was stitching everything. I kind of did that offline and made sure everything is watertight. This is a really good model because if I go back to one, everything is quad base. You may end up with a couple triangles. Uh, I really try to not do that with this one. So there is uh, uh, pretty clean. And that's not usually typical for me. Usually you're going to end up with a... a triangle or maybe a polygon that has five sides and sometimes six sides so uh, just try your best to keep it super clean uh, but we're gonna we're gonna do with this project is we're gonna go ahead and start with a nice clean file all right so you select it and I'm just gonna go ahead through the process of export selection and uh, go ahead and go to redfish and we'll call this uh, redfish underscore two, so you know that this is a fresh <laughs> fish. All right, so we have an OBG export selection. Sometimes you can hit export all, so if you have a separate eye or a hook hanging out of the mouth or he's wearing some sort of backpack or whatever, it's a very specialized fish that we have. All right, so we've exported it out. Um, let's redo that really quickly. So uh, if we're doing this for uh, gaming, uh, which is Unity, uh, you can see all this uh, stuff over to the, to the right. And we actually want to delete that. It actually adds weight to the file. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and delete by type. And it's good to kind of get through that. You can also go in and hit Modify Freeze Transformation. Uh, don't really need to do that because everything is set to zero with my, with my trans X and Y, Z. If this is all out of whack, it means your origins are way off. But sometimes freeze transformation is a really good thing. So let's, let's rinse and repeat that export selection. It's a good thing to know anyways. I'm just going to uh, override that and say yes. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to jump into ZBrush, and hopefully everyone here in the class has at least uh, got a quick uh, installation on this, and you have this. And this is where we're going to jump into the Wacom tablet. We're not going to use it right now. I only use it very little. Uh, it's one I'm kind of drawing onto the surface, but majority of the time, I'm always using my three mouse button. Uh, you see professionals in the field, they literally live with this uh, stylus in their hand and uh, are pretty amazing with it. I just haven't had the contact hour to time to do that. All right, so you have this uh, ZBrush. When you first open it up, it'll have this dialogue. You'll want to come up here and hit hide. All right, so I didn't do that because I wanted it to come up pretty quickly. So we're going to go ahead and import uh, the OBJ. And so you got the wheel of death really quickly. And so we're going to do redfish underscore, the one that we just did. So we know it's uh, nice and clean. Uh, and, and you notice right when I brought it in that it didn't have any warnings up here. Now, if you had triangles or a polygon, it had five or six or seven signs, or you had some meshes that didn't collide together correctly, It'll say, do you want to triangulate or quad and triangulate this hit either or try to hit triangulate probably is the best and uh, move on. So you see there's no fish in here. You actually have to uh, left mouse uh, click and drag it into the scene. So I'm going to drop it really quickly and do not click again or you have to kind of reopen up ZBrush all over again or hit a new document. Uh, you want to go immediately to edit. Right. I guarantee you there'll be half the class that does this. So uh, this is a totally different interface from Maya where you were hitting uh, Alt or Option and being able to use your uh, left, middle, and right mouse button to kind of oscillate around. 
here you're actually using the void of the space. So if I click over here with my left mouse, I can kind of uh, move around and rotate. I also can uh, zoom in and out uh, by uh, using this. So you can zoom in and out. So a lot of this stuff is over here. Uh, I can also hit frame and uh, hit move to move this around and uh, rotate. Now, if you go in here and try to rotate here on the object, it'll, you're actually sculpting. So that's why this interface is like that. So really quickly, I, you start to uh, see I'm starting to sculpt it really quickly and we don't want that. So I can either hit Command Z or uh, I can go back in time with this, uh, this slider right here. I don't know what that triangle was about. Hopefully everything is good. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move this. I'm gonna go frame this in and I'm gonna zoom out so I can kind of zoom in and out. All right, so we have our fish in there. Uh, we're gonna start uh, modeling it soon uh, and start sculpting it. Uh, but I just wanna go over the interface. Again, these are the ways you move around in that space. Uh, there are also hotkeys uh, related to, well, maybe not. Uh, there is for F, uh, same as in uh, Maya, F is frames and uh, whatever you have selected. All right, so it's kind of cool. There's a silhouette, it does look like a redfish uh, already. So what we're gonna do is uh, just really quickly go over uh, basically what I was doing there, uh, kind of sculpting really quickly, we're gonna get into that. But the big thing is, uh, the takeaway is uh, X. So we worked so hard to make that symmetrical in Maya, we don't want to throw that away. So you can see I'm uh, this little red dot is indicating. So if I hit X, you'll see it's on the other side. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and you can see when I start sculpting, it's on both sides. So it's really uh, quite effective uh, for what we're gonna be doing. We definitely uh, fish are symmetrical. So, so are humans and uh, a host of other animals. Now there are animals that aren't symmetrical, so sometimes you'll want to not use that X. All right, so we are going to uh, use a Z uh, plugin. And what we're going to do with that is uh, UV map this. There could, there's a hundred ways to UV map it, but uh, there's other software. Um, I think it's called Hedis. Uh, some students in the past have used that. So we're just going to use UV Master. Uh, it's down and dirty. There's probably, there's definitely a, a better way to do it in Maya if you really want to get it nice and flat and even. Uh, but we're just going to do it here in ZBrush, especially with organic things. It's just, I think it's easier. And again, there's multiple ways of doing this. I'm just trying to make you a quick pathway for your project uh, since you're working with uh, marine animals. All right, so we're gonna go to the Z plugin up here. I'll try not to talk as much. And we're gonna go to Z plugin, we're gonna go to UV master. All right, so we have the symmetry on. Go ahead and keep that on and we're gonna hit uh, unwrap. All right, there was work on clone down there. You can click on that and what work on clone is, is it's gonna create another fish. All right, so we wanna make sure that our UV map uh, happen. Again, we had symmetry on and uh, again, you can work on clone if you want, so just gonna kind of know what you're getting into with that. That is just an extra fish that's gonna be hiding up here. All right, so what we wanna do is make sure our texture map worked and what it looked like, because this is very, 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 very important when it goes to the Substance Painter. If you don't have it UV mapped, basically you can't really paint onto the surfaces. It's just gonna come out all bitmappy and probably wrong and Lots of tiers, all right? So we're gonna go to uh, texture map. I'm gonna pull this up. Again, this is a really wonky uh, interface. You can click over to the side uh, to kind of scroll up and down. Some of the stuff you have to have to kind of go down to get to uh, areas. So I'm gonna hit create and I'm gonna do new from UV map. And that's what we just made. We made a UV map of this texture. So uh, it'll make a little bit more sense when I click on it, all right? So if I click over here, you can kind of see how the fish has been kind of kind of split in half and gutted. Um, you can see it's actually in a couple parts, that's fine. Uh, typically, you just want to make sure this is uh, being translated over here so you can see uh, the image of it. All right, so if you have like a matrix of dot, 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 dots or squares up in here, 
there's something really, really wrong with uh, your model. So it should look something like this. And uh, it's a really low polygon level. If you look up here, we only have 954 polygons. It's super light. Um, if we were in the 1980s or 90s, it would be amazing. But now we're into million polygons now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Again, that was just to get me acclimated that I know how to UV map it. This is critical when you move on to Substance Painter, and it's critical when you export all this stuff and get it into a game engine, or even in uh, rendering like in Maya for a final scene for a VFX shot or animation. All right, so this video is just kind of get you acclimated. Uh, you guys can totally screw this up uh, if you want, or just kind of play around and start over and just kind of start sculpting, getting used to this interface. It is wonky, I'm not going to lie. All right, so one of the things is, uh, when I usually sculpt like this fish, I would probably set aside a good eight hours uh, to do it. And I'm doing this really quickly and I'm not even prepping. I'm just going right in with the skill set that I have. So it's not gonna be perfect, but you would definitely wanna spend a good eight hours on a model. That's how much I would put into it. So I would double that for your first time. So don't get frustrated. This is a huge learning curve that you guys will be going through but I'm just kind of giving you kind of a pipeline to do this uh, if you want to do it. All right, so uh, we've got the material. I'm gonna click on that and it's uh, gray. I like that when I'm sculpting, but we're gonna go uh, to uh, kind of a white skin shader so it's easy. We're basically gonna project onto their uh, surface really quickly so we can start to uh, kind of cheat so we can start sculpting based uh, on what we have projected. We can see where that jawline is and where the eyeball is exactly. So it's not gonna be exact, but it'll give us uh, some direction on what we're gonna do. All right, so we've changed the clay color to white. I'm looking over to my left uh, at my notes. I'll probably have these same notes when I see you guys uh, very shortly. So uh, geometry, we're gonna go into geometry. So. Uh, right now, I actually gonna turn this back to red. It's kind of annoying, so uh, glaring white. So I'm gonna go over to my geometry, and right now we have 954 polygons or verts or however, yeah, active points. So it's actually counting the points uh, in between on the edges. All right, so we're gonna go uh, again. Open up geometry. It clicks on it. Opens up this uh, dialog box or GUI, and we're gonna hit divide. All right. So what that does is basically smoothing it out and I uh, definitely want to have this smooth on. I think everything is on default on my end. So everything you see here should be similar to what you have in the same uh, ZBrush uh, 2021. Hopefully we don't have 2022. So I'm gonna divide it and I'm gonna go up to uh, five divisions. And you see each time I do it, it's just getting smoother and smoother. Once we get up to division, subdivision five, your uh, computer's gonna get hot. It's gonna start turning on the fan on, on and off. Typically, if you're gonna be working on doing this as a um, job, you'll definitely wanna get a PC tower that has a definite cooling tower. I'm doing this all on my laptop, that's all I have. Uh, but definitely, if you are using a laptop, I always tell students to get uh, some uh, chopsticks. They're free, just take an extra set whenever you take a Chinese takeout. Put it underneath the uh, laptop so it has air circulation. I even have one student uh, that actually has a, a fan, two fans underneath that keep the circulation going properly on the computer so it cools off. You can uh, damage your computer. I've burned out a logic board back in the day. So just think about preserving your computer. So, but for today, today is fine. All right, so we've gone up to uh, five times and we can look up to our poly count. And we're not even in the millions yet. We're only at 243,000 uh, uh, verts or polygons or whatever. And so uh, so we, if we want to go down, we can always go down up here in geometry. We can uh, go down in our slider, uh, go all the way down to one, and we can always go up to deep. There's also, uh, if you hold down shift deep, you can go up and down this ladder also. All right. So pretty cool, uh, those are some of the hotkeys. I don't know a lot uh, about the hotkeys here. Again, um, with my own research, I kind of dive into ZBrush for about two or three months, and then I get everything done and I move into Substance Painter. So I don't 
spend a lot of time in here with my models, uh, but uh, it's really powerful and you can really just spend your whole career just using this uh, software. All right, so uh, we're on subdivision five and it's really nice to go down to subdivision one uh, if you're having proportional problems and you need to push stuff around and you don't want this higher level of fidelity or uh, mesh count. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna wrap up shortly, but I do wanna show you a couple of tools. And so there's only basically three tools that I ever use. Uh, again, I don't spend a lot of time, only about three months out of the year. So I have clay buildup, or clay, and clay buildup, and basically clay buildup is all I use. It's a standard tool is what we're on right now. And also uh, one that says move tool. And this is this really cool uh, tool to kind of pull in and out your proportions. And I'm trying to find it. I, it looks like a, a pearl or a drop. Here it is, move. Uh, move topology is, is very similar, but the, the move tool is really cool. So I'm gonna show you really quickly what these uh, do and I'll undo it. And then in just a second, we'll save this file just in case it crashes. Uh, ZBrush is a little pretty stable, but it can crash. All right, again, I have uh, X uh, off, X on is symmetry. All right, and so here's your uh, draw sizes up here. We can go very small and big. And so uh, I have it on the move tool, so I'm not sculpting, I'm just pulling out uh, geometry. Um, and you can see with that, uh, basically the size of my brush, I can go very small and very big. All right, and typically I use the the move tool is when I'm not happy with my proportions, like let's say that tail is way off, or this tail is off, or uh, really quickly I need to move this out. This is just totally sticking out in the wrong direction. All right, so you can really quickly, uh, with your eye, work on the proportions. All right, so I'm gonna Apple Z some of that, um, whatever I've done there. And uh, I'm gonna show you some other tools, all right? So we've got our brushes. I'm gonna go to my standard tool and I am gonna make my brush size a lot smaller. And so we're definitely gonna use this. And this is, when I use a standard tool, this is usually when I get my stylus out. All right, so with the stylus, uh, you can grab it. Um, again, just for now, use the mouse. We'll use a stylus in just a second. But you can see, I can start, you know, like that, extra gill, and this is a huge brush, right? Uh, we're gonna go really small on this size, and you can start to see uh, really cool things that we can do with that brush. All right, then we also have clay buildup. This is a really powerful uh, thing, uh, kind of like the standard tool, but you can kind of, kind of organically, like if you're working with real clay and we wanted to build up like that grossness around the gill here. Maybe not grossness, maybe just kind of cool. I'm gonna go up on the, the draw size here. And you can build it out, just build out the flesh uh, bigger and bigger. And the cool thing is uh, that I love, and, and you'll, you'll start to feel is, is you'll hold down your shift while you're in that uh, clay buildup. And you can see over here, it turns to smooth. And you can just kind of smooth this out. And you can, can smooth it out all the way down to the original shape. All right, so stuff like this, you can smooth really quickly. And so you can do clay build up, smooth it out. So if you're really trying to build that up, and we'll definitely get into this, especially in the mouth area where you see that uh, area is kind of built up and then uh, draw size. And again, I'm just doing this with my uh, mouse. Uh, you can see it's kind of square. So we just build that up. So really quickly, you can start to add some uh, dimensionality to this. All right. All right, so I'm going to Apple Z uh, a lot of this. Again, up here, there's this uh, thing that you can kind of go back in time, and it's pretty infinite. Uh, maybe it stops after 50, uh, 50 saves or whatever. Um, and I think it's in preferences that you can make this infinite, uh, infinite or whatever. It depends on how strong your computer is. All right, so we're going to stop there. I'm going to upload this really quickly. Uh, but you do want to uh, learn how to save it. You would think it would be over here in document save as, but don't do that. That's going to save it in a different format. I don't know much about that format, to be honest. I always go over here and save as, and I'm going to save these in several uh, stages. 
So uh, I co go ahead and organize, because if you're working on a huge team and you're doing almost every animal or uh, aquatic life and the uh, mangroves, you want to be very organized with your team. So we're gonna go redfish, I'm gonna call it number one. So this is our first one. And this is called a ZTL file. And uh, you'll be able to open this up by importing it and, and just bringing in your latest uh, model of your fish. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And we're gonna stop right there. On the second one, we're gonna go ahead and project uh, our image that we have onto the surface and then slowly start building up the surface. Again, we only have two hours with this. We already just kind of probably burnt 20 minutes here, but we're gonna take baby steps. I'll record everything I have. So if we uh, lapse in time, you can always go back and watch these tutorials. I'm gonna go through the whole pipeline and so you can always go back and watch this. This can be easily done with a manatee, a porpoise, to uh, other fish, and even to birds and stuff like that, which are probably a little bit more difficult to model for a beginner in novice. All right, I'll talk to you soon.